welcome back to another beautiful, amazing, whatever you want to call it, video. We're back again today. We have a special guest. We have Brother AJ in the building. But AJ, just kind of introduce yourself. All right, sounds good. Hello, everyone. And I'm glad to be here. Thanks, Ezron, for inviting me. Um, to, I've been watching you as a young man, and I've been blessed to just to see you uh, being able to stand up for the word of God, being proud about you know your faith and not being afraid to express it. Uh, we need more young men like you, especially in these times, to stand up on the word, to stand up on their faith, and to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to your generation. So I'm proud of you, brother. Thank you. God God gave me a gift and he said, use it. So I'm just using it for the better cause. Guys, I already did a video like this serving God now, but I just wanted to give you guys another side of it. And we have a bunch, we have like five set of questions that we're going to be asking by the AJ trying to get his mindset and where he's on it where he is on the topic. Now, the first question of the day is, um, when did you start serving God, Brother AJ? It's a good question. So I was saved at the age of 11, uh, but I didn't start serving God until 16. Uh, so when I got saved, there was a resurrection Sunday and Easter Sunday. They had a play at church, you know, about Jesus dying on the cross for my sins and being raised again. And I was touched and just blessed by what he did for me. And so at the age of 11, I got saved. And for years, I mean, I was active in church and in Sunday school, but I really didn't start taking my relationship seriously until the age of 16. Uh, so around the age of 16, um, was when I got filled with the Holy Ghost, um, it was at that time where I started to question a lot of things in life. So um, I was thinking about my future, um, my purpose. And as I was questioning those things, at the same time, there was sort of a duality going on. I had some friends who were focused on honestly, the street life, um, trying to make money fast and now, um, selling drugs and stuff. And then I had another group of friends who were just really into girls. And so I wanted something different from my life, you know, seeing those groups of friends. I had friends in church and I had, you know, friends who were believers. Um, but in seeing the lifestyle of my two group of friends, I decided to start to make some changes. So I started to um, take my faith more seriously and trying to find purpose um, and what I'm supposed to do. And that's when I really started to dedicate my life fully to God. So I think in every Christian's life, there's the time when they say yes. And then the time where they begin to take their relationship seriously and just begin to put their all into learning, reading the scriptures, growing, not just professing to be a Christian, not just professing to be saved, but also living it out as best they can. And so it was at the age of 16 where I fully gave myself over to God. Um, next question. How have serving God benefited you in your life? So in many ways. First, they kept me grounded. Um, I mentioned the friends, the two groups of friends that I used to hang out with. As I was getting older and, you know, pursuing things, going to college, um, getting internships, and I would come back and, you know, hang out with my friends um, that I used to hang out with back in the day things were changing. We were on two different trajectories. So for example, I had a friend I used to hang out with. Um, he went into selling drugs. Last, when I had came home from college, I found out that he was arrested and in jail. Um, I had a few other friends that were always, um, you know, chasing girls. And I found out that um, pretty much almost all of them had kids out of wedlock before their time at, you know, pretty much in high school or right after high school and were just struggling to try and support their family. Um, I even had uh, two friends who dropped out of college because of that. Um, you know, they, like, you know, a lot of young men, they try and sow their wild oats and try and explore and do everything now, and then try and take life more seriously later when they get older, and they end up making mistakes. So um, for me, I've been blessed in serving God to avoid a lot of those pitfalls and mistakes. And then the second thing that has helped me when serving God is I've had some difficult times. I mean, when I was in college, I was, so the statistics have not really changed now. When I was in college, it was about 10% minorities, about 3% black people. So I was in a sea of, you know, people who I felt at the time were smarter than me, were better than me, you know, I grew up in a hood. So I always felt that I was insufficient in a way, but God gave me strength and encouragement, you know, from the scriptures, 
that I would repeat over my myself and my mind that I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me and greater is he that is within me. So even through college, the encouragement is through the scriptures and studying God's word and just even having, you know, men of faith, people of, um, in the church that I could pray with and get encouragement with really helped me through college and difficult times. Um, I honestly don't know how I would have gotten through some of those times without God, without the Holy Spirit giving peace and encouragement to my mind and my spirit, and without, you know, people of faith that prayed over me and helped cover me. Uh, so I would say that, you know, that has immensely benefited me. And I could truly say that I would not be where I am today. The accomplishments that I have, everything that I've achieved in life would not have happened if it had not been for God. So in everything that, you know, every accomplishment, every, I just graduated with my doctorate, all glory goes to God. It's him that has kept me, um, has sustained me, and, you know, has built me up to where I am today. Okay. The next question is, why is serving God now so important? So now it's more critical than ever to serve God. When we look at what's happening, we are, we're suffering with a global pandemic where hundreds of people, thousands of people are dying with this COVID-19, right? The last time this has ever, the last time we have ever experienced this was in 1918 with the Spanish influenza. And we, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know when we'll be able to get back to normal. If there ever is a normal, there's going to be a new normal, right? That we're going to get into. And we're at a time and a place where um, it is critical to increase your faith. It's your faith and, and God's presence that will get you through, that will help give you encouragement, and that will help give you direction during this time. And I mean, we're, we're, we're dealing with not only the pandemic, but also as, you know, Black people in America, African Americans in America, as minorities in America, we're dealing with pretty difficult times. Um, we've, we've seen uh, from our leaders um, often that the support is not there for our community. And now we're, we're seeing, you know, on video, on, on, on the news and everywhere else, um, more and more uh, what we've already known, the systemic oppression that's happened to African-Americans and minorities throughout the history of this country. And, you know, from seeing the death of George Floyd to Ahmaud Arbery and, and to seeing so many of those cases, which we've, you know, grown up in, in, the, in the hood, grown up in our communities, we've already seen that time and time again. Now we're just seeing it at a larger scale because now people, you know, have smartphones and can record. Um, but with all that is going on, it is critical at this moment, at this time to serve God. I mean, as a black person, yes, you never know what will happen when you're pulled over. You know, I'm praying that things will change. But, you know, knowing that you have a, 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 a father, that you have someone that will never leave you nor forsake you, someone that will keep you during those times, someone that will sustain you, someone that will give you wisdom beyond the wisdom of man. Uh, sometimes I even recall when I was dr just driving home from a youth Friday night and the Holy Spirit would just for some reason direct me another way. I don't know what I was avoiding. I don't know um, what could have happened. It could have been an accident. It could have been maybe, you know, a cop, you know, probably had a bad day and something could have happened. I don't know, but I know that God has kept me from imp impeding danger. Um, I've seen it time and time again where, you know, something as small as a different route home. And then when I hear on the news, there's a major accident, you know, something as small as that to just something as major as when dealing with this pandemic, um, being able to sort of pray and, 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 you know, spend time in his word and just receive encouragement and, and strength to go on. You know, it's a scary time. It is, it's a scary time, but having my faith um, has really, kept me during this time. I've received strength. Um, it's helped keep my family. Um, you know, I have devotion with my family on a daily. Um, we pray together, both my wife and I, we've, we've escalated how much prayer we, we do now during this time because it's more necessary than ever. And I just want to encourage, you know, young people use this time. You're now alone in your homes. You can't really go out and do much. Use this time to grow in your faith, to grow in your relationship with Christ. It is a critical and important time right now. And I believe that 
after this is all done, that God is going to do something great. And it's really, I call it the cocoon period, right? The caterpillar goes in a cocoon. And then after, you know, some time comes out and becomes a butterfly. I think this is a season where God has put us in a cocoon, put us in our homes to grow, to um, develop our faith in him so that when this is over, we're going to come out and fly. He probably birthed ministries. I know with you, brother Ezron, Ezron, he birthed this ministry, you know, just feeling the need to begin to do podcasting and different things. I believe that this is a time where God's going to begin to cultivate those gifts. He's going to begin to cultivate your relationship with him. And I see great things happening. I see great changes happening in this country and around the world. And I see great things happening in the body of Christ. Yeah. And especially like during this time, like I've really, I've really started to pray a lot. I probably pray probably, I probably pray near 10 times a day. Like I'm like the little stuff, like waking up um, before I go to sleep, each meal, um, uh, um, if I'm about to do schoolwork, because I procrastinate when I do schoolwork, and that's a bad habit I have, and I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to work on it, so like, yeah. before I do work, I'll be like, God, help me, help me to procrastinate, help me to just listen, help me to da 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 so I look, I just literally just use this time to just continue to dwell and dig deeper. And also, since I have a lot of um, time on my hands, because this week um, is actually my last week of doing, like, schoolwork. Next week is just, like, a makeup week. Yeah. And this week is just, like, the last week of, like, them actually giving out schoolwork. And uh, with the upcoming weeks, um, what I've learned from, like, doing, after going on to, like, next week, I'm going to start making, like, schedules each day and what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to start like dig deep and more into the work because like I usually do one scripture a day, but I'm, I'm working my way up. I'll do two, then work my way up all to like a chapter because the smartest thing to do, don't try to do a big chapter. I always try to start off with like a verse because sometimes you'll read a whole chapter and not understand anything in it. So the best thing to do is always to just start off with a verse, start off two, just build your way up to to that chapter i started off with just doing like one chapter a day that just didn't work for me so mm-hmm. i just started doing just on um, like a verse a day and it's just that's how and yeah. especially with this time i'm just gonna keep on shooting my videos out like i'm gonna do two videos a week i'm gonna make sure i stay consistent and i'm working on that because i've been saying i was gonna stay consistent and i didn't but i'm gonna i'm gonna just work on it i'm just gonna yeah, stay yeah. because my voice needs to be heard and these videos need to be out. <laughs> amen, amen. And I agree. I started off the same way. I started off with just a few verses a day and then eventually grew into a chapter and then it just sort of went from there. And it's just, you know, starting off small and being consistent. I think discipline is one of the critical things to help strengthen your faith, you know, just being consistent. And, you know, you you encourage me, to be honest. I, I love to see young men who... Um, have a hunger to grow in God, to grow in the word and to profess it. You know, a lot of times there's a lot of uh, young people who believe in God, you know, they have faith, but when it comes to their friends and even vocalizing it, you know, in public, let alone on a platform like YouTube or Facebook or Instagram, um, you know, often they won't do that unless it's like a Drake song. Then all of a sudden, you know, they start to talk about God's plan on their life. (laughs) I understand. I was I was like that before. I was like that before, because like when I first came over in America and just getting adjusted with everything, I experienced like bullying to like the worst mm-hmm. level. So that basically experiencing that that basically just made me just be quiet, not talk to nobody, and leave stuff alone. Like people probably didn't even know I was a Christian, because I was I just because of that whole bullying thing. I just I shut down. I stayed quiet. Um, I say about like sixth grade. Mm-hmm. And I was like, when I got into sixth grade, it was like a whole new school. I'm like, you know what? It's a new beginning. I, ain't nobody going to play with me. If somebody play with me, I'm going I'm going to get them before they get me. Like, that was my mindset. And it was bad, but that helped me to vocalize myself a little bit more. So, you know, sometimes God use bad situations to turn them into good. Ever since then, I just continued to, like, vocalize more. And then after, like, the whole bullying experience, that's that's when I started the YouTube to talk about, like, bullying and, like, other stuff that teenagers go through. Yeah. And when I was doing that, I decided, I was like, you know what? 
let me apply this to preaching, see how it, see how it works. Because basically with my motivational speaking, it was basically me doing motivational speaking and preaching at the same time. So mm-hmm. it wasn't something I wasn't doing, but it wasn't something mm-hmm. I was really focusing myself towards. So when mm-hmm. I did I started to focus, my, focus myself towards it, I started to drop the Christian videos. I got my meaning about the topic, my opinion on it, my verses. I'll probably have like probably like two, three verses in like each Christian video and stuff like that. Then I started to do it in church because the whole, my ministry did not start in church. It started online and I couldn't yep. and everybody liked it. And I'm I'm very vocal on um, people just like, I'm not, I'm not afraid to like, I'm not afraid to like say I'm a Christian. People mm-hmm. I'm a very well-spoken person, and uh, all my friends know that. Like they, they know I'm a Christian. It wasn't something that I hide. I remember my first day of like, uh, no, my first week of high school. It was like one of the first things I mentioned by myself. Mm-hmm. And wow. on that, everybody knew it. And the good thing about me saying that, my friends be putting me in check sometimes. You're like, Yo, as long as you can't say that, you a man of God, even though they're not a Christian. Sometimes, you know, they be, they be trying to like purposely grease you, but it, it helps <laughs> because they put you in check to be like, nah, bro, you can't be saying this. You can't be saying that. You can't be doing it. So it helps me. So with me vocalizing that, it, it, it um, helped them to like put me in check anytime I'm out of line. And you got to have people around you that, that is able to put you in check. If they're around you and they're not able to put you in check, you can't yeah. put in their life. Because a real person, a real friend will put you in check when you're wilding out, when you're not on this, the right road that you should be on. I want to encourage to you to do the same. Like, don't be afraid to, to um, speak your mind, but also be careful with it because um, message could easily get misinterpreted and I also no. have to be very aware of that with me doing YouTube with me doing my speaking it's good but you also got to look at the bad sides of it because information can easily get misinterpreted mm-hmm. what keep me going is just knowing that I'm doing a good thing and God is telling me to do I always just re- remind myself that of every single day God is sending me to do this and I know what I'm doing I'm doing it for the better good because I don't know exactly who I'm impacting. I don't know who I'm reaching in this video. I don't know, but I know I'm reaching somebody. I'm impacting somebody life in some way, somehow. I may not see it, but God always see how you work. You may not see it, but God will see it. And obviously he knows everything. So I, I'm just staying on my right track, doing what I got to do, encouraging the you to just walk in your talent, walk in your purpose, um, do all of that because God each God gave each one of us a gift. Now, it may not be speaking, may not be singing, may not be dancing. It may just be technology. No, but just walk in it and perfect it, and just stay stay with it. Stay with it. Amen. I agree. I agree. Yeah, just use your talents for the Lord. You know, and. I think this is the generation where, I mean, we know that my generation and the generation after us, social media is a big thing. And in order to evangelize and to minister on social media, you actually have to understand it, right? Not only the technology aspect, recording, setting up videos, doing podcasts, but also understanding the social aspect of it. And I think that um, you, you, you especially, you know, and, and young men like you and young ladies like you are primed or set up for such a time as this to really just begin to pour into the, the young people of your generation in a special and a unique way that my generation and the generation before could not have you know the platforms that you have to really talk to others to, to profess your faith and to just really challenge others that may be either struggling or even you know not doing all that they're capable of just to challenge them and to push them forward. And I love that. I do love that. I do not, I mean, there's issues with social media, you know, with every generation, there's issues with the platforms that we have, but I think there's a greater good that can come from it. As long as we, you know, just like what you're doing, you gear it towards something positive. You gear it towards, you know, the scripture talks about those things which are just, those things which are true, those things which are lovely, those things which are a good report, focus on those things. If you focus on the good that you can do with it, a lot more good can be done than a lot of the bad that we may see on, you know, social media. And I thought of that because 
I obviously I I just started doing I started just basically just doing the YouTube. I never really branched out to Facebook or like Instagram or like Twitter, or Snapchat. But um, what's it called? Uh, I don't remember who told me. I think either my brother or somebody else told me. He's like, yo, you start posting your snippets to like your videos on social media because you like you you got mad people on your stuff anyway. So not only you can bring the people that you already have, you can bring more people. So, yeah, that's true. Take that advice, and it worked. It, it worked. Because maybe, like, even with the snippet, they may not go watch a whole video, but I always make sure that us, any of my snippets have key information. Yeah. In case you don't watch the video, you still get a low, you still get, like, um, a good amount of information. And that, that could, it could go a long way. It, it could go yeah. a very long way, and I've realized that. Um, the last question I have is, um, what advice do you have for anybody serving God? Like, whether we talking about the youth, the adults, just anybody in general. So I would say keep the faith. Now is a time more than ever where your faith is going to be tested with all that we're dealing with. This pandemic, COVID-19, the coronavirus, um, you know, systemic oppression. Now is the time more than ever where you're gonna feel wary, uh, where some people will leave the faith. Um, oftentimes it's challenges that either build or destroy our faith, but it's up to us what we do with it. Life circumstances, trials are gonna come, um, issues are gonna come in life. You're going to, the scripture and God never says that you won't have problems, that you won't have issues, that you won't face heavy circumstances. The Bible never says that um, you're never going to experience heartache. You're never going to experience pain. You're never going to have to deal with problems in life. What the Bible does say is that God will never leave you nor forsake you in the midst of those problems, that he'll be with you until the end. So he gives us comfort during those times. So my encouragement is um, don't let your current predicament, don't let your current circumstances drive you away from your faith, but let it build and strengthen your faith. Let it make you stronger so that when you come out of this, right, when we come out of this pandemic, when you come out of all the things that you may be dealing with in life, you're going to be stronger, you're going to be better for it, and you'll have a testimony to share with others that may be now going through what you just went through. And you could say, I got out of it. God kept me and made me better, and he can do the same thing for you. He really care. My personal advice is um, keep, keep people around you that are Christian and I'm not saying just your friends. Um, I'm saying like adults because they can help you in so many ways and physically, um, uh, emotionally, spiritually, all mm -hmm. of that. And uh, you could come to them just to like basic advice, whether it's like famous yep. stuff, spiritual stuff. Um, that's a good thing about having a spiritual leader. You can literally come to them about anything and they're able to um, help you. I say, yeah, keep um, keep contact with spiritual leaders. Uh, yes, yes. Watch who you keep around you. Your company reflects basically you. So if you want to have that reflection of the whole Christian stuff, have people around you that are Christian and stuff like that. Obviously, not all your friends are gonna be Christian, I understand that. But just always make sure that your company is a good representation of you. Um, yeah. Don't let people throw you off of your um, game. Because people is always going to try to state their opinion. God's not real. God's not that. How are you going to believe that? Da, 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 da. How are you going to, like, people just, people going to talk. So, yeah. you're going to talk, but just don't let it um, throw you off your game. And if it do, go to your spiritual leaders and talk to them. They can help you. And I say dwell in the Bible, whether it's your physical Bible or using a Bible app, dwell in the Bible every day. I say start start with like doing, let's say about 20 minutes a day. Pray, read a scripture. If you don't understand it, King James, go to NLT because NL, that's what I do. I usually or the NIV or the message version. Yeah. I usually read King James. And if I don't understand it, go to NLT and then pray after that little 10 minute could go a long way. And then as you go, just don't stay with one verse. Elevate to two verse and three verse and four verse and five verse. Then chapters, some chapters got 
a lot of verse in it. But what you can do, you can see like big chapters up. And that's what I do. Um, that's what I do on Saturday. Saturdays I do Bible studies with um Brother Gio and our Brother Jave. We we're mm -hmm. in um John. We're going into chapter two. We just we um read the chapter and discuss it and yep. just basically have Bible study. Yeah. And I think doing those things it helps to strengthen your faith. Connecting with other people, um, to do Bible studies and to pray together. And I think it's two part really. I think um during this time to grow your faith. It's connecting with like-minded believers, so people that are serious about growing their faith, serious about um, spending time in the Word of God, serious about praying. And I think the second part is building that discipline within yourself, too, um, so that you, even separate from you know the group, spending time in the Word of God, spending time praying, spending time reflecting and, and looking to hear from God. And the reason why that's critical is because if you'll have times in your life where um, the folks you will connect with may not be available. And it's those moments where your faith will be tested, where you can be strengthened during that time uh, from the practices and discipline that you already had. So yeah, I definitely would agree. I would say connect with other people who have strong faith or have like-minded faith, you know, and be strengthened by them and make sure you're strengthening yourself as well on your own so that you're not always dependent on, you know, I only read the Bible around when we have group study, but I read it then and by myself. So I get strengthened, um, whether it's twice a day, three times a day, however it may be, I'm continually receiving strength. And another thing that I would say is as you go throughout the day, and I do this a lot is, um, I had mentioned the scripture about focusing on those things which are lovely, which are just with or true, just have whether inspirational messages, scriptures, um, music, you know, inspirational and faith-based music being played throughout the day to give you encouragement, um, to keep your mind focused. Because um, the one thing that we have, the one struggle that we have is keeping our mind stayed on Christ, keeping our mind focused. And so if you are constantly feeding yourself, even when you're relaxing and chilling, right? You could be, um, I don't know, going for a run, going for a jog. Um, not many people can go to the gym now with what's going on, but you might be going for a morning walk or jog. Begin to feed yourself during that time. I often, um, I'll listen to the scriptures or I'll listen to, you know, uh, worship music. Or what I've been doing a lot now is just listening to messages on YouTube as I'm walking or, or um, different faith-based audio books just so I'm constantly feeding myself with the word. I'm constantly feeding myself with the things of God. And what you'll find is what you feed yourself with um, is going to come out of you. And um, in times of desperation, it, you know, oftentimes in times of desperation, it's in those instinctful moments. So those moments where you're doing things based on instinct and not on um, sort of thought, you know, developing a thought pattern and really thinking about what you're doing consciously. It's those times of instinct when what's inside of you comes out. So it could be, you know, a, a time of struggle for you and instantly you think to pray. That's what you want to develop. It could be a time where, uh, you know, a, a neighbor, someone's hurting and instantly you think, oh, let me encourage them. Those are the things that you want to build inside of yourself that so when when issues arise when problems arise when your faith is being challenged on when or when you are being challenged instinctly you know through your instinct what will come out is the things of god and that's what um my prayer is not only for myself but for young people and adults um that are growing in their faith that they'll have an instinct their their not their instinct before even getting to process their thoughts is to rely on God, is to lean on God, is to give strength and encouragement through the word of God. And I think that having that will help you and, and just help our community and all of us as a whole, um, where people, their natural instincts is really that of, you know, of faith, that of encouragement and inspiration from the word of God. I think that's where we want to be. Once we're the more of us like that, the better place we'll be in as a society, as a people of God, and as a body of Christ. Uh, one last thing. Um, mm -hmm. You're going to lose people along the way. 
uh, that's just something that's gonna happen. You're gonna you're gonna um, lose friends, people close to you, and I don't mean like die. I mean like like your relationship is no longer gonna be with them. Yeah. And I that you could ask every single Christian. It's happened to all of us. It's just it's something that's just gonna happen because you gotta have people surrounding you that want the best for you. That's gonna benefit you and they help you. They if they blocking you from that. You gotta depart the relationship. And I know it's hard. That's why you pray on it and do whatever God comes to mind and tell you. Whenever that thought up in your head, be like, do this, do that. Just just listen to it. Try your best. Just try your best to listen to it. I'm doing the same thing. Sometimes through the day, God be talking to me like, I'm gonna do this, do that. But I sometimes just don't be, I'll be like, you know what? Like, I'm, I'm tired right now, guy. Like, I'm, I'm not feeling that. But I'm working on just be able to listen. Yeah. God is not going to tell you nothing that's going to um, neg- negatively impact you or just or going to sway you a wrong way. He's not yep. going to tell you stuff that sway you the right way. You may not think it's swaying you the right way, but just know it's swaying you the right way. Because I've known, I was seeing like, for me personally, God have told me like certain things, and I and at first I'd be like, "Bro, it's not, it's not gonna do nothing." But I just do it anyway, and I see how it benefits me in the in the long run. You always gotta think about the long run. Always think about the long run. How stuff is gonna benefit you, and yeah. um, off the topic of like Christ, being like being a Christian stuff, you can also do that in like general life decision. Um, always think of head. And that's something personally I do. I always think ahead, like, how would this decision affect me in like a year, five years, mm-hmm. ten years? And that has helped me to avoid so many situations. Cause I know, especially like with social media, which you're posting, stuff can backlash you in like the future. And that's why I'm only posting in Christian content and my videos on there. I don't well, I post pictures and stuff here and there, but I don't be tweeting and doing all that other stuff because Sometimes, you know, crazy stuff be coming into your head and you got to leave it in your head. And that's what I do. I either leave it in my mouth or leave it in my head. I don't, I don't put any of that out there because I've seen how it's negative impact a bunch of people. And yeah. you could be doing your best and then somebody be like, I remember when you said that back in 2014. And it, it, it always just ends bad. And even you though- You were wise. You were very wise beyond your years. Many people have fallen into disastrous mistakes for the very thing that you're talking about, you know? And, you know, as, I'm glad to see that, that you you have a level head and you're, you're future-minded. You know, you're thinking about the future. You're thinking about how your actions now affect your future. And, you know, the more young people we have like that, you know, the better it is. Because many young people, are oftentimes, they live for the now. You know, they live for the moment. And sometimes, you know, it's good to enjoy the moment. But a lot of times we we sacrifice the future for the moment. And you never want to be sacrificing your future just to have fun or enjoy the moment. You always have to be future minded thinking about how is this going to affect me years down the line? How is this going to affect me, you know, even months down the line or, or decades down the line, you know? That near term, short term, and long term, how is it going to affect me? You always want to be thinking like that. And uh, I just want you guys to really just use this time in quarantine the best way you can. Um, pick up a new hobby. Dwell in the scripture. Keep yourself active. Just don't let time waste. Because you don't want to look back and be like, you know what? I could have been doing this. I could have been doing that. We have a lot of free time on our hands, so just use your time the best way you can just benefit yourself read a book um like i said pick up a new hobby do something just be active and uh, just continue to be great remember that god is always with you he will never leave you nor forsake you god is the only person in this lifetime that won't ever abandon us won't ever abandon us so as long as you stay with him he'll stay with you because god will be with you god can be with you but then you don't be with him so then God is just over there standing by himself. You got to stand with God, not away from him. Right, Can I say a quick prayer? Oh, okay. All right. 
Just a quick prayer. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, we lift you up. We honor you and we give you praise. Thank you for Brother Esfran and the message that he's bringing to his generation. I pray, Lord God, that they'll receive it. I pray that they'll be blessed by it. I pray that they'll gain heavenly wisdom, that they'll want to grow and strengthen their relationship with you during this time. And God, I pray for the manifestation of great works on this earth from them and from this brother as they dedicate themselves, their time, their talents, their all towards the purpose that you have given them. I give you praise and I give you honor for what you're doing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Peace, guys.